Hello everyone and welcome back to another mini tour with Madison here at the New England Aquarium. I'm Madison and I've got another itty bitty tiny tour for you. This time I'm going to show you some of our more mysterious animals that live here at the New England Aquarium. You might have seen or heard of these animals before, but they are not what they seem. In the next three videos, I'm going to show you three animals that have more going on than meets the eye. And we're going to learn how we can protect them and protect the blue planet that we all share here together. The first animal I'd like to introduce you to is a hermit crab right here behind me in our northern waters gallery. You can see an Acadian hermit crab perched right here atop this log. We also have hairy hermit crabs in this exhibit. You might have also seen Acadian hermit crabs or long claw hermit crabs, which are a bit smaller on a beach near you if you live around here in New England. Now you might be wondering, I've seen lots of hermit crabs before, Madison. What is so mysterious about a hermit crab? Dear viewer, I'm so glad you asked because hermit crabs are not actually crabs. Hermit crabs do look a lot like crabs, but that's actually because of a process known as carcinization. Basically, over millions of years of evolution, animals that live at the edge of the sea in tidal zones keep adapting to look more and more like crabs. That's because the crab body plan is the ideal body plan for surviving at the edge of the sea. Or, as I like to put it, the crab body is the ideal beach body. Speaking of beach bodies and the beach, it is a little chilly up here in our northern waters gallery on the third floor, but hermit crabs actually live throughout the world's ocean, with the exception of the Arctic and the Antarctic regions. They even live in tropical areas. So I'd like to take you down to our first floor where our tropical animals live to show you some other species of hermit crabs that are smaller and live in warmer waters. Oh, hey, thanks for following me down to the first floor. So here in our living corals habitat, we do have three species of hermits, hermit crabs. We have red reef hermits, Hawaiian reef hermits, and Mexican hermits. So what are hermits if they're not crabs? Once again, so glad you asked. They're technically anomura, which is a word that means differently tailed and different tails they certainly have. Although hermits are not true crabs, they do have a lot of things in common with them. They're both decapod crustaceans, so they have 10 pairs of limbs. They both have claws for self-defense and claws for feeding. And they're both invertebrates with no bones on the inside and hard protective shells on the outside. However, all 5,000 or so species of true crabs build their own shells over their whole body. Hermit crabs build a hard shell on the front of their body, but the shell that's on the back of their body, they did not build themselves. It's actually a rental. So who are hermit crabs renting these shells from? Another great question. The animals that build those protective shells that hermit crabs use are usually mollusks, animals like snails, whelks, and conchs. Hermit crabs move into empty shells to protect the rear end of their body, which is squishy and curly, almost like a little worm. Differently tailed indeed. So, hermit crabs move into those strong protective shells to protect their squishy side, but how can we as humans help protect hermit crabs and the blue planet that we all depend on. So glad you asked once again, dear viewer. There are lots of things that we can do to protect our blue planet. One issue that's impacting hermit crabs and other shell building animals is ocean acidification or osteoporosis of the sea. Ocean acidification is caused by humans burning fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas. When these fuels are used to make energy, it releases a gas called carbon dioxide. That's the heat trapping gas that mostly causes climate change. And the ocean actually also absorbs a lot of that carbon dioxide. Dissolved carbon dioxide in the ocean increases ocean acidity. That's a problem for shell builders because it dissolves calcium in the water, which is an important part of them building those nice strong shells. So when they can't build those nice strong shells, 
it can be harder for our hermit crabs, our renters, to find good real estate. Luckily, there's so many things that we can do to combat ocean acidification when we work together in our communities. The most impactful actions we can do is help supporting the transition from fossil fuels over to renewable energy sources like wind and solar that don't produce carbon dioxide. We can also work to protect natural ecosystems that help trap carbon dioxide, like old growth forests, mangroves, and salt marshes. We can even help start community gardens and plant more native plants, whether you live in a rural area or in a city. In cities, we can plant community gardens and rooftop gardens, and not only do those green leafy plants help absorb that carbon dioxide, they can also help us feed our communities, which is a great bonus. I hope you feel inspired to learn more about these actions and learn more about these animals that we share the blue planet with. Learning more and sharing what you learn with your friends is another great way to help protect the blue planet. If you wanna keep learning with me, make sure to subscribe to all of New England Aquarium's social media channels and stay tuned for the next mini tour with Madison. I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon and goodbye for now.